So I would like open this session because we are on time. It's I think 10 o'clock a.m. now. Uh, we have uh, five presentations in this session uh, regarding topic uh, telecommunications engineering. Uh, I would like to introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I am uh, my name is Roman Sotner. I am from Brno University of Technology. Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Communication uh, in Berlin, Czech Republic, and uh, I will sharing this session. So, uh, the first presentation has title FSO Systems Performance for Novel Turbulence Shadow Chief Square Model. Uh, I have to note that each presentation should uh, fit within 18 minutes. So, including 18 minutes, we have also uh, provide a presentation and uh, discussion. So I suppose 15 minutes for presentation at the uh, largest time. So no more than 15 minutes and then three, four minutes for discussion. So I would like to invite the uh, first presenter, which I see is, uh, I think uh, is uh, Stefan Panic from uh, University in Serbia. And uh, I would like to ask him for presentation. So what is yours? Thank you very much. Don't forget to click on share screen button. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, yes. Hello, my name is uh, Professor Stefan Panic, and I will present you uh, this work, uh, First Our System Performances for a Model uh, Turbulence Shadow uh, Chi Square Model. So uh, you are all, all aware that. Uh, by growing this uh, 5G and uh, 6, 6G uh, new uh, features, uh, first of all, takes special part in uh, developing uh, secure and uh, uh, very uh, fast communication. So uh, free space optics has several advantages over uh, RF radio frequency transmission like uh, higher bandwidth, like uh, uh, some security, uh, a better security. Um, there, there, there is no interference in such transmission. And uh, also, but, but also one of the, the main uh, drawbacks that appear here in uh, modeling uh, in, in first hour communication is that uh, turbulence uh, of course and pointing errors of course uh, so there are three uh, main uh, physical phenomena that affect this kind of transmission it is attenuation by, by barrel and barrel law then uh, uh, turbulence and pointing errors which cause uh, signal degradation and that leads to uh, b, b error rate uh, uh, increase so uh, small uh, changes in positioning of transmission and, and receivers uh, do a various factors like building space, wind loss and thermal expansions can lead to uh, pointing error and can lead to, which leads to misalignment between the receiver and transmit, transmitter and that lead to uh, signal uh, degradation. So uh, main task in, in uh, discussing this sort of communication is finding analytical uh, trackable uh, model of probability density function of uh, random amplitude of signal that uh, goes through free space optic channel and uh, in literature uh, by now they have been developed several models uh, which uh, accurately model uh, how to, uh, turbulence affected uh, signal changes in uh, free space optic channel like gamma gamma negative exponential log normal uh, double label uh, k, k distribution inverse uh, gaussian distribution ik distribution exponential distribution double generational distribution and so on and so on and uh, our goal in this paper was to develop a more general model and to include uh, both uh, turbulence effect uh, along with this uh, misalignment pointing error effects. And uh, we have managed to uh, develop such analytical uh, trackable uh, model in uh, closed form. We have uh, discussed some standard performance measures of such, uh, of such uh, model. 
So uh, we have uh, observed both uh, large scale and uh, small scale turbulations that occur in channel and by using uh, composite approach, uh, we have observed uh, variations that uh, uh, affect uh, refractive index uh, in both ways. So uh, this is how we have modeled uh, one uh, small scale uh, turbulence with uh, his square model. That, that has been or, or, uh, that that has been already uh, uh, observed, but then we have also added the, the uh, small scale uh, um, turbulence model with this uh, uh, sh shadow model, and by using both uh, models, we have made a composite model which has been presented here in the form of uh, some. In, in closed form of infinite sums and uh, modified Bessel function. And we have uh, pr presented uh, probability density function of such uh, uh, of the amplitude of uh, first or channel uh, for such model on, on these uh, figures. And then, uh, as, as it has been said, we have also observed uh, how uh, misalignment affect uh, the turbulence uh, in, in ch channel and uh, we have observed uh, zero boreside uh, pointing error uh, model. Uh, zero boreside pointing error model is well known in the literature and it has been uh, discussed for some composite models but uh, for the first time we are using both uh, uh, misalignment model and this general uh, new, new turbulence model to, to obtain a novel uh, probability density function of the uh, amplitude of signal that fluctuates in, in this first hour channel. So this is the probability density function of uh, uh, this non boreside uh, uh, misalignment model. And we have introduced this uh, non boreside uh, model along with its parameters, which ha have been described closely in the paper. Uh, the radius of optical beam, the, the distance, uh, the uh, ratio of equivalent beam waste, and so on and so on. Uh, the, the parameters are closely described in the paper, like the parameters are closely described in the paper for the uh, uh, for the turbulence model that we have uh, decided. That, that we have developed, and by using similar approach, we have obtained a uh, novel probability density function of um, this uh, uh, first uh, signal that goes to, to the channel in this form of uh, closed form uh, of Mayer G function. So this uh, expression is very general and it can be reduced. We have uh, mentioned several uh, free space optic models before. And by setting some uh, values of uh, parameters, uh, we can reduce this model to other well-known models that, that are uh, known in the literature. So this is a, a great contribution of the paper because it, it gives us very general model. And uh, when we have this very general model, then we have obtained uh, this performance analysis. We have uh, observed, uh, for example, bit error rate uh, over on-off uh, keying modulation in uh, free space opt uh, optical system. And uh, we, ha we have uh, also succeeded to obtain closed form expression for this uh, performance uh, measure uh, here in the form of uh, Fox ha functions. Uh, and uh, also we have uh, obtained these uh, performance measures for, 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 for both models where misalignment is included and where only turbulence uh, from small scale and uh, large scale uh, irradiance is included. So uh, we have here, uh, let me say, four uh, contributions of, of the paper. One of them, first is probability density model for this uh, new turbulence uh, model which include only small scale and large scale uh, uh, radians. Then we have a probability density function that includes also misalignment 
uh, misalignment pointing error, and then we have uh, two expressions for uh, bit error rate of on of king for, for both of them. And based on this. Uh, expressions uh, we, we have provided some numerical results that are closely described and discussed in the paper and we have uh, discussed these numerical results in the terms of uh, turbulence parameters like uh, some misalignment factors like some uh, k factor of the large scale turbulence model uh, power of the of, of the a small scale turbulence model and so on and so on. It is presented in the paper and discussed. And we have observed uh, what uh, parameters of this model um, leads uh, to increase and what parameters of this model uh, leads to, to decrease of average bit error rate. So by observing these uh, parameters in these expressions, someone who is uh, pro projecting this first link can obtain uh, Quality of service that that he need need to that that he need to obtain and the discussion and uh, uh, some explanation of parameters and results is uh, providing in the paper and these are only some of the results that, that we possessed. Uh, further, we will also develop uh, closed form expressions for some other other modulations and we can also obtain closed form expressions for uh, channel capacity of such. Uh, First, first of all, link. That, that is the, what we will do further. So to conclude, the, the main contribution of this uh, paper is that we have presented analytical closed form expressions from, for probability density functions of the irradiance at the receiver under newly introduced uh, shadow uh, she square model in the presence of atmospheric turbulence and pointing errors. And we have uh, discussed and obtained average bit error rate uh, for uh, on of uh, K modulation and uh, results are graphically presented to show impact of uh, various turbulence uh, parameters, how they affect uh, signal transmission uh, quality. And uh, the, this has been presented in, in the, the uh, numerical result session where uh, a K factor and uh, optical beam radius and standard jitter deviations are uh, uh, discussed how they affect this uh, free space optic uh, link. And these uh, expressions for, for, for this uh, new model are basically the, the uh, contribution that can be further exploited as, as we have already as we have already uh, said. So uh, this is uh, the this is mainly the the, the 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 presentation. So if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Okay. Thank you, Stefan, for presentation. Uh, if there are any uh, questions, I can open discussion for this topic. Well, or any questions from audience? Uh, can let the audience to think about the question. I have first question for you. Yes. Uh, what are typical values of attenuation in this kind of uh, transmission of signal on the, well, uh, the on the link? Uh, well, the, the, these attenuations uh, they, they they are somehow determined by by the by, by the size of the link. Mm -hmm. And they, what is the, the most defining factor of attenuations? And then the, the another uh, uh, factor that determines uh, attenuations is quality of signal that we want to obtain at, at, at the receptions. Uh, in terms of bit error rate or in terms mm -hmm. of if, uh, if something else is transmitted like image, maybe some, uh, some other uh, performance measures uh, determine those quality. And if we want to to obtain quality ten on uh, minus third or ten or ten on mi minus third or, or, or ten on minus uh, six, uh, it, it depends what value we we need to to obtain. And also, it it de depends on the it, it uh, can depend on, on the on the uh, uh, strength of the signal that we are trying to to 
to transmit. Mm, of course. But, but uh, basically, uh, when we when we observe these uh, attenuations, since uh, free space optic is very na narrow band and uh, it has uh, very precise uh, co communication and, and, and misalignment sh should be avoided. So, so, so this fades uh, vary maybe. 30 of or, or 40 uh, decibels it, it depends how how the, the misalignment is mm, yeah. is obtained whether or not yeah thank you very much for the numbers and uh, how large distances are you uh, providing for tests um, we we have only done uh, this mathematically and we have mm -hmm. only done matlab simulations we, mm -hmm. we, we do not uh, still possess the, this equipment to to measure but we have a mo model uh, uh, mid distances like uh, uh, several or, or, or several of 10 kilometers like okay. maybe uh, 50 60 kilometers are, are done in the in the in the mathematics yeah in comparison with other models you mentioned some uh, Rayleigh distribution log logarithmic normal and so on uh, is there some uh, difference in accuracy if you apply your model and if you compare it with uh, previously uh, known models uh, well, well uh, accuracy is is, is uh, pretty good because uh, when we set some parameter values, it reduced to to these models. But but there is one question here because the, the uh, results are presented in in Meyer G functions. So and in uh, infinite sums of Meyer G functions. So we need to have maybe uh, one hundred or two hundred sums. To some mm -hmm. Meyer G functions to to obtain this accuracy very, very good. So okay, if there are not questions from the audience, I again thank you for the presentations. It was very good presentation, and uh, uh, I would like to introduce the second presenter, which is uh, Kristaps Rubus from Latvia. Uh, the title of the presentation uh, has a uh, name power limits with adjustable 10 giga G receivers parameters for ARF transmissions. So, uh, colleagues, uh, colleague Kristaps, uh, uh, the words is yours. Uh, we didn't hear you. Kristaps. No uh, hello. Oh, yeah, yeah, now, now we have always okay. okay. So something was wrong, but previously it worked. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll start uh, the share. All right. Yes, you can start. So we have 15 minutes. Okay. So I hope you can see my presentation. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. See. So my name is uh, Christoph Srubuls, and I'm here to present uh, the research about power limits with adjustable 10G receiver parameters for air of transmission. So firstly, uh, what I included in the presentation, firstly, is the motivation. Secondly, I will talk about the simulation setup. Then I will talk about the obtained results. And then I will uh, also mention the uh, conclusions. So uh, about the uh, motivation. So basically, new technologies pushes the demands of e efficient simulations uh, for the initial stage development of uh, new technologies. So. Uh, because of this, our uh, research was aimed to develop a new uh, approach for simulations to evaluate the power limits for different OFDM rough transmission systems. Uh, as a result, we demonstrate the utilization of our approach and prove its feasibility by obtaining uh, the power limits for the practically uh, easy, implementable, and potentially widespread architecture. Uh, we also focus on uh, obtaining the widely applicable limits in terms of uh, error vector magnitude and received optical power in dependence on sensitivity. And we ensure this by recalculating EVM or this is Rob curve for another receiver sensitivity and responsivity for uh, only by introducing an additional power penalty uh, without doing uh, other simulations. So about the simulation setup, here the developed simulation setup for uh, three uh, uh, radio frequency channel OFDM uh, radio over fiber transmission system for a sub six uh, gigahertz frequency range uh, integrated into uh, passive optical network architecture is demonstrated. 
So basically, the parameters of the OFDM uh, signal are chosen to be close to 5G new radio, uh, radio signal parameters. Hence, uh, in this case, the subcarrier uh, spacing is uh, uh, 240 kilohertz, and the number of uh, subcarriers has been set to uh, 1024. Uh, and as a result, uh, the resulting baud rate is uh, approximately two 250 megabots. So the baud rate of 250 megabots with uh, 64 uh, QAM uh, or quadrature amplitude modulation corresponds to 1.5 gigabits per uh, channel. Uh, and as a result, the RF channels are spaced by uh, 500 megahertz at three uh 3.5 and 4 gigahertz and uh, about the setup itself together the uh, olt uh, consists of a continuous wave laser with a frequency of uh, uh, 193.1 terahertz and minimal output power of 6 dbm it is modulated by uh, three combined uh, ofdm channels utilizing a max under modulator uh, with an insertion loss of 4 dbm and an extinction ratio of uh, 20 dB. Uh, the driving voltage of the Maxander modulator has been set to 7 volts uh, with an application of uh, bias voltage of 3.5 volts to both arms of uh, the Maxander modulator to ensure the simulation of a balanced single drive uh, Maxander modulator, modulator modulation configuration. So uh, the ODN comprises a 75 gigahertz multiplexer and demultiplexer and uh, also a standard single mode fiber uh, with an attenuation of uh, 0.2 uh, decibels per kilometer and a dispersion of 18 picoseconds per nanometer per kilometer. Uh, and uh, the ODN consists of a standard uh, 10 gigahertz uh, pin with a sensitivity of uh, minus 90 dBm and responsivity of 0 0.7, a bandpass filters for selecting RF channels and an OFDM receiver for decoding and quality evaluation. Uh, while the variable optical attenuator is uh, used to adjust the received optical power. So I also want to mention that the low pass filters are used to simulate the bandwidth uh, of the devices because uh, in this uh, simulations uh, software which is the uh, which was used to uh, make the setup which was a vpa design suit uh, usually the components have infinite bandwidth if you don't define it so uh, the low pass filter was used to define the bandwidth and for the evaluation of signal quality error vector magnitude or evm as i already mentioned before is utilized and together, the number of simulated symbols, symbols per subcarrier uh, was uh, 640, which was uh, sufficient enough to ensure precise EVM estimation. So about the results. So uh, here we can see uh, the EVM versus ROP curve uh, for uh, receiver sensitivity of minus 90 dBm and responsivity of uh, 0 0.7. And also uh, the curves were uh, um, simulated for different SNR values. So basically the noise was simulated into the transmitter utilizing an electrical amplifier without uh, gain to ensure the varying of SNR uh, of OFDM signal from 25 dB uh, to 40 dB with step of 5 dB. So uh, the value of 40 dB has been chosen as a typical value for a good quality radio signal, while the 20 dB uh, was the minimal value of SNR capable of ensuring FM below uh, 8%, where the threshold of 8% was uh, chosen uh, following the typical requ requirements for the 5G new radio signal. Um, yeah, as you can see uh, from the graph, so basically uh, what, when you increase the noise uh, and decrease the SNR, so basically it is like you need to compensate a lot more uh, in terms of power to reach the threshold. But at some point when the noise is uh, the noise floor is big enough, you can't compensate with uh, power to reach the threshold. 
And also, as you can see from the graph, uh, interchannel uh, crosstalk is uh, basically minimal with uh, 500 megahertz spacing. So yeah, uh, because uh, as uh, previous research has have showed uh, that uh, you can compensate the change in receiver sensitivity by just compensating the uh, received power uh, at the transmitter. So basically, uh, the same initial curves were like uh, modulated to fit uh, receiver sensitivity to minus 22 db uh, dbm and uh, to minus 16 dbm so minus uh, 22 dbm is uh, like the uh, upper uh, upper like upper x axis uh, axis uh, with blue color and like uh, the minus six, uh, 16 dbm is uh, like the lower x axis uh, with green color so yeah basically if you want to like uh, so you can use this, the same uh, curve I've showed before for different re receiver sensitivity parameters uh, by just adjusting the received optical power. So for example, if you want to like you, uh, know the, the performance when you have a receiver with minus 22 dB, you just adjust uh, the received power uh, by minus 3 dB, which means that you need to like uh, reduce it uh, and you will get the same curves. So the same is for minus 60 dBm, but in this case, you need to like adjust the power by 3 dB, meaning that you need to increase it to uh, receive the same results. So uh, here is uh, shown, uh, so here, here the curve uh, is shown like uh, re in relation to uh, responsivity parameter. Uh, so, Basically, when you we we calculated the uh, change the change in power that you need to compensate for different uh, receiver responsivity parameters using this formula, uh, which is shown on the right. And so, basically, for example, if you want to adjust, uh, uh, if you want to see the uh, same results. Uh, for a, uh, for a, when you use a receiver which has a responsivity of uh, one, you need to like, adjust the uh, power by one point five four ninety minus one point one point five forty nine. Uh, but if you want to like uh, get the same results with a receiver who has a responsivity of 0 0.5, then you need to adjust uh, the power by 1.46 uh, dB. So yeah, uh, these are the results for uh, responsivity. And here is uh, the same, uh, basically the same uh, initial curve, but adapted for uh, different sensitivity and different responsivity. So basically in this case, uh, the uh, sensitivity uh, is uh, minus 60 dBm. Uh, and we also show this curve for different responsivities, uh, for example, 1 and 0 0.5. So the upper x axis is for responsivity of 0 0.5. And the lower x axis, which is in green color, is for responsivity, responsivity of uh, 1. So uh, yeah. If you like compare the uh, together results against the uh, initial cu uh, curves are showed. So basically, in terms of uh, resp responsivity of one, the difference is 1.45 decibels uh, against the initial curve. And uh, if you are like using a, a receiver who has a resp uh, responsivity of 0 0.5, the difference is going to be uh, of uh, 4.46 decibels. So yeah. So about the conclusions, so we have investigated and evaluated the uh, the performance limits in terms of uh, AVM and ROF, uh, ROP uh, for three uh, RF channel OFDM uh, ROF transmission system. 
So we have proposed that it is feasible to ensure the similar EVM using ROP to characterize the whole uh, power budget of the system without uh, distinguishing separate optical signal loss sources. We have also confirmed that there is no significant impact of interchannel interference uh, for channel uh, spacing of uh, 500 megahertz. And we also have demonstrated that the impact of SNR of OFDM signal to be transmitted is crucial. And it is also non-linear and cannot be compensated with increased ROP when you reach a, a specific SNR threshold. So the acceptable SNR usually uh, as, as uh, seen from the curves is like uh, 30 dB, while the rise of SNR to 25 dB requires a significant ROP, uh, a ROP increase. So the minimal AVM can be provided with the increase of, uh, of ROP for SNR above 35 dB and is below 4%, for 30 dB is below 5% and only about 7.5% for uh, the SNR of 25 dB. So yeah, together we have proposed, demonstrated and evaluate, evaluated uh, by approving the uh, calculated results with simulations and uh, approach allowing us to uh, adjust the obtained uh, ROP limits for sensitivity and responsivity for, of other 10G pin uh, photoreceivers without doing uh, additional simulations and complicated calculations. So yeah, uh, that is gonna be it from me. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, I will try my best to answer them. And yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you for presentation, uh, Christophs. Uh, okay, uh, I can open the discussion from with audience. If there are any questions to uh, colleague, we can ask or you can ask. If not, I have a few things which was what was interesting for me during your presentation. So you uh, have you simulate uh, your system uh, on uh, some uh, or with some design tools uh, uh, suitable for integrated circuit design, or it is not? Uh, it is only some uh, initial study. Uh, so basically, uh, I can I can't really comment on this question because I wasn't exactly the one who mm. did the simulations. But uh, yeah. Uh, this is as 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 much as I understand. This is a, a work in progress. So basically, this is just an, an initial study and it's mm -hmm. to be continued. So in the future, you have probably expect some full integration of system on chip. Well, yeah. Uh, so you have used uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplex uh, approach for such system what is the most significant benefit to use this uh, modulation scheme in your system what can you tell us about about the most significant significant advantages because there are many other schemes for example uh qp sk and so on but you your team selected also ground frequency division multiplex modulation scheme uh, what are the most important benefits would you think i am not asking well, any uh, details but what why are you of your team decided to use this scheme i i personally don't know why they decided it but i know that uh, OFDM has a lot of benefits. For example, like you, for, especially for wireless transmission, when you can like uh, split the carrier into multiple subcarriers and uh, transmit uh, with lower speeds, and that decreases the distortion. So I, I think that's the reason. So I don't know why, mm -hmm. why else they would choose it. So yeah, that is just my guess. Yeah, the, the normally they are using for terrestrial broadcasting of TV, so there are issues with uh, path loss. So the, the diversity approaches, diversity transmission. So therefore they are using OVDM, but in the, the case of system, it is quite unique. But of course, it has, I think, benefits for 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 you. Okay, so. That's was what was in my mind during your presentation. So I will ask to other colleagues if there are questions. I don't think there are no questions. I am checking also chat. Nothing appeared. So uh, thank you again for your interesting presentation. And I would like to wish you success with other future works with this topic. Thank you again. OK. Thank you. So we have to move to another presenter.
uh, which uh, with the topic with focus on narrowband spectrum sensing uh, physiologic versus deep learning system which was proposed by colleagues from uh, university in mexico uh, uh, authors of this paper are Andrew Rochas, uh, Jordana Jovanovic Dolecek, Dolecek, and presenter, I think, is Andrew Rochas. Is Andrew here? Yeah, I uh, think. Hello. Hello. So, what is yours? You have 15 minutes to introduce uh, uh, yourself and your work of your team. So, please proceed. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, my name is Andres Rojas, and today I'm going to present to you um, um, our, our work uh, called Narrowband Spectrum Sensing Fuzzy Logic versus Deep Learning Systems. This work um, has been developed under the supervision of uh, Dr. Gordana Jovanovic Olesek. We belong to the Department of Electronics at the National Institute of Astrophysics, Optics, and Electronics in AOE in Puebla, Mexico. Uh, here are the contents of this presentation. We will begin with an uh, introduction uh, regarding spectrum sensing. Then uh, we're going to present the fuzzy logic system and the deep learning systems that were simulated in MATLAB and Python. After that, we uh, present the results, the discussion, and finally our conclusions. Okay, so now uh, beginning with the introduction. So um, spectrum sensing is nowadays uh, a widely researched uh, topic, especially in communication. So the idea of spectrum sensing is uh, to find uh, unused spaces or fre frequency bands um, that uh, can be used dynamically, especially for cognitive radio. Uh, secondary users, which we call SU, must identify if any primary user or PU occupies a certain band. The idea is to monitor the activity in a license range, uh, allowing the exploitation of the underutilized spectrum, of course, without causing any destructive interference to the primary users. Um, the secondary users must be able to detect holes in the spectrum without the help of the PUs. This has to be uh, an independent uh, work that they have to achieve. Uh, there are many techniques for spectrum sensing. Uh, the idea is to minimize the interference while at the same time maximize the utilization. So narrowband, in this work, we are focused on narrowband spectrum sensing, which uh, is used to find the occupancy status of only one band. The term narrowband implies that um, the bandwidth of the signal is small enough so that we can consider the channel response as a flat, as flat. Uh, the performance of this type of algorithms is measured uh, generally in terms of two probabilities, the probability of detection, which we call PD, and the probability of false alarm, which we call PF. In this paper, we consider two popular methods, fuzzy logic and deep learning. Both techniques have been reported in the literature and the motivation for our work was to explore the advantages and disadvantages of these two techniques. So to do this, we have simulated seven different systems, three based on fuzzy logic and four based on deep learning. Uh, now we can begin with the fuzzy logic systems. Uh, we have uh, designed three fuzzy logic detectors, uh, FLD1 to FLD3, and uh, these were designed, as, as I said, on, on MATLAB using the fuzzy logic designer. This is a toolbox. Um, and now I'm going to detail a little bit more about the, the, the systems. So FLD1, as, as you can see on the figure, we have used uh, triangular membership functions. Uh, we have three antecedent variables and five consequent variables. So these membership functions, the shape, they were chosen due to their simplicity and computational complexity, because if we think about it, we can actually use um, other types of shapes as Gaussian or uh, Bell or sigmoid, etc. There are many options, but in this case, we have decided to use triangular because they are 
uh, they are less complex in terms of, um, of mathematical operations. The second detector has the same uh, membership functions as the as FLD1, but the difference is that um, we have different aggregation and implication methods. These are internal operations performed by the inference, by the fuzzy inference engine. And, and, and here I present to you the, the output variables, the consequent variables. As you can see, we have five uh, different uh, ranges from very low to very high possibility of the presence of a primary user. So we are using the fuzzy logic detectors to have uh, an interpretation of the, of the possibility that the user is present in, in that band, in the analyzed band. And finally, we have the, the third detector. It has the same system set up as FLD1, but here, as I said, we can change the, the shape of the membership function. So as an experiment, we have decided to to compare against a, a Gaussian uh, signal, as you can see here. Here we have a summary of this three uh, fuzzy logic system. As you can see, we have triangular and Gaussian shapes and different implication and aggregation methods, minimum, maximum, uh, product, summation, etc. So this is just uh, to compare the, the differences between the fuzzy logic systems. Uh, now, if we go to the deep learning systems, in this case, we uh, have um, uh, used uh, the three main or more or mostly used models in deep learning, which are the convolutional neural network, the long short term memory, and the fully connected uh, network. So in this case, we have two uh, CNN-based systems, CNN1 and CNN2. As you can see, the only difference is that the second one is using uh, another uh, convolutional neural network uh, cell. Um, and the other ones, we decided to, to simulate them as simple as possible. So we're not giving the deep learning systems any type of advantage over the, the fuzzy logic, so we can have a fairly comparison. Uh, this is why we decided to simulate such a simple architectures because uh, deep learning is nowadays, uh, there are many types of networks or architectures that we could create, but in this case, we decided to keep it as simple as possible so we can analyze the, the situation to compare with the, with the fuzzy logic. Now I present here the simulations which were performed in MATLAB. The input signals were generated synthetically using QPSK modulations, Rayleigh selective fading channels, and additive wide Gaussian noise. We explored 13 possible SNRs. In the literature, there is a, almost all, always the, 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 the range from minus 20 decibels to four decibels. As you can see, this is a really low, uh, signal to noise ratio, which means that we have really high noise um, presence. This represents uh, fading channels, where, which is like uh, a possibility that, could, that we could find in practice for cognitive rating. The synthetic training data is composed of 2,000 iterations for each uh, signal to noise ratio value evaluated. And in total, we have uh, 26,000 data points that have been used to simulate these systems. The results, um, here we have first a comparison between the four deep learning systems. As you can see, the highest accuracy is, uh, was obtained by the CNN2. And if you remember, CNN2 was the combination of two, um, two convolutional neural networks uh, in series. So, uh, this makes sense because it is a little bit more um, useful in terms of feature extraction. Yeah, and as you can see, we have not obtained the best results for LSTM or FC1, but for CNN, we have obtained uh, uh, really good results. And now, if we compare the fuzzy logic systems, the three fuzzy logic with the four uh, deep learning, we can see here in the probability of false alarm um, that the lowest in, in a spectrum sensing system, what we want is 
to have the lowest probability of false alarm as possible. So if you notice on this image, we have the green signal uh, to be CNN2. Uh, and the, as you can see, uh, it is obvious that um, deep learning is showing the lowest probability of false alarm. However, if we uh, compare now the probability of detection PD, in this, in this case, it is the opposite. So we, we need to have as high as possible, closer to 100% of probability of detection. So here we can see that the green and purple signals, they represent the convolutional neural network systems. Uh, we have a really stable, let's say uh, like that, that a stable uh, performance. Uh, if we analyze between the SNR, which is the x-axis, so we are evaluating for a really wide um, uh, noises, uh, well, well, uh, amplitude noises. And if we notice the, the fuzzy logic, it has a really, um, a really big slope. Uh, this is due to the, the noise uh, that is affecting the energy detection because uh, a, a little, uh, a small detail that I forgot to say is that Fuzzy logic systems were based on energy uh, threshold. So we decided to calculate based on the energy of the signal. And, in, and this corresponds to what the literature says that uh, energy-based detectors are really noise sensitive. This is the, the justification of why fuzzy logic, it has a really acceptable performance for, for example, from minus uh, four decibels to four decibels. But however, as the noise gets higher and higher, the fuzzy logic tend to, to minimize their probability of detection, which is something that we, of course, do not want in, in a cognitive radio scenario. So now the discussion. As I previously said, we have uh, decided to explore the advantages and disadvantages. And here in the presentation, I'm presenting this uh, table as more illustri uh, illustrative way. Uh, the fuzzy logic has many advantages. Uh, well, simpler operations based on energy detectors, as I said, because energy detectors is just a threshold uh, comparison. Uh, CPU computation instead of GPU hardware-friendly algorithms. The disadvantages is that we have a small probability of detection, especially for a uh, signal to noise ratio lower than zero decibels, high probability of misclassification. These uh, are noise sensitive, uh, uh, inherent to energy detectors, a complicated estimation of the membership functions because uh, we can um, provide any other shape for the membership functions. Uh, for deep learning, the advantages is a high probability of detection, in this case, except LSTM1, a stable probability of detection for a wider SNR range. And the disadvantages is the need, the need for a GPU for the training process because we had to use a GPU to, from Google to, to train the system and a lot much more effort into the design of the architecture if we are trying to this was only simulated, but if we try to, to implement this in any kind of um, device, we of course would need a lot more much, much effort to implement deep learning in the fuzzy logic. And now the conclusions. Uh, in this paper, we compared multiple spectrum sensing systems based on fuzzy logic and deep learning. The deep learning detectors, especially the convolutional neural network, provide higher probability of detection in a wider range than fuzzy logic. However, for some regions, uh, the fuzzy logic also provide acceptable performance with less complex structures than the deep learning. An exploration and analysis of the advantages and disadvantages of both techniques were presented. And as a future uh, work, we plan to implement sort of like a combination between both, uh, both approaches uh, in a, in a adaptive network-based fuzzy inference system, an AMFIS, so that we can create an intelligent fuzzy system that is capable of learning similarly to a, to a deep learning model. And that's it for my presentation. Thank you very much. And I'm here to answer your questions if you have any questions. 
Thank you, uh, and use for uh, very good presentation. So there was a lot of interesting thing. If there are any questions from audience, please ask. You can write uh, the message on uh, the meeting chat. Yeah, I can read it to audience, or you can ask directly if you connect it uh, to the room. Uh, so uh, during your presentation, I have some notes. Uh, what is, uh, for my point of view, uh, what is the typical performance of the channel which you discussed? You discussed something about narrow band channel, but uh, normally engineers want to see uh, the specification of channel, the bandwidth of channel, for example, and frequency position of such channel. So you can, if you can give us some example, it will be very nice. Um you mean examples uh regarding the the carrier frequency yeah for example carrier frequency and bandwidth yeah typical typical which is purpose of your approaches to target for okay so um this work um in this case we have used uh for the the band of 80 um 850 megahertz for example mm -hmm because we have the he, their a probable um with uh connection or i mean uh, is it is used by lte if i'm not mistaken 4g so that could be a good point in start but uh, for example since i'm working on spectrum sensing as my phd thesis i've been reading a lot of using for example for the 5g 5 gigahertz uh, but uh, in that case, uh, right now I haven't uh, simulated a, a channel on that um, on that frequency. But I mean, we have um, some options. We have multiple options of frequencies. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, so uh, all your results are based on simulations. I suppose in MATLAB, probably. Yeah. In yeah. MATLAB. In MATLAB. Uh, are you considering for future uh, research targets also applying of some uh, radio frequency equipment as uh, uh, radio frequency transmitter uh, to emulate uh, the channel with specific bandwidth and type of modulation for further tests? Uh, yeah, so far we have, um, I've been doing some uh, uh, test uh, with a uh, NIUSRP, which mm -hmm. is yeah, I know it, yes. an SDR from National Instruments, mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately, my we have a like a little bit old device, so it's it only gets to two point two gigahertz. Mm -hmm. So I've been uh, analyzing the the eight hundred nine hundred megahertz band, and I've been trying to uh um to capture the signals using only an antenna so uh in my case i've been trying to use uh the spectrogram so uh yeah. in terms of signals like in this case i've been i have simulated signals just like time series but for my project i'm trying to use the spectrum so um uh, i've been using the ns uh, the usrp which is an sdr a software a software defined radio and i've been uh, having some results but in this case we have only simulated as you said um, okay okay so the research will be continued with uh, experiment experimental part good uh, we, we, have, we have possibility to see very good uh, results of uh, green traces. I think it was CNN2. It was indicated very good uh, performance for detection. Uh, what another uh, properties of uh, your uh, uh, things are about this uh, this kind of detection? Do you can you explain us something which is very typical for us that kind of detection or very interesting? Which was very interesting for you if we, if you were working with this uh, time of algorithm? Okay, um, since I I I did this uh, work. Um, almost like a, a year ago. So mm -hmm. when I first started my PhD, so 
Um, at first, uh, I mean, this is my first um, approach or the, uh, my first application of deep learning. So I didn't uh, knew that, for example, uh, convolutional neural networks were specifically, well, first they were specifically designed for images. So mm -hmm. they are uh, using uh, a 2D, two-dimensional input. But in my case, since I was simulating um, vectors or time series or signals, amplitude signals, uh, I, I, I wasn't aware that there was uh, actually um, a 1D version of a convolutional neural network. Mm -hmm. So that was really interesting for me because I wasn't aware of that. And uh, of course, we have many more other options, um, but I mean, this was an exploratory first mm -hmm. uh, because I was on my course of intelligent systems. So I was learning about CNN and LSTM and fully connected, etc. So that's why I decided to try the, the three first so I can learn from them and I can apply for communication, yeah. which is, I think that's interesting to, to combine the deep learning with communications. That's really interesting for me. Okay, good. Thank you very much for presentation again. So it was a very nice presentation. So uh, I want to invite uh, next presenter, uh, which is, uh, Joseph Papan from Slovakia with a presentation entitled a Comparison of New Solutions in a IP Fast Reroad. So, uh, Joseph, Joseph, if you can. Okay, so uh, hi everybody. My name is Joseph Papan. I am from uh, University of Zelina uh, from country Slovakia. So what was the purpose of the article? So in our manuscript, we made a technical review of latest uh, fast real solutions. Uh, we described three most uh, cited solutions in recent years. Uh, and what was the goal? Uh, the goal of the paper was the, to provide a new analysis for our future research. So I would like to start with the basic uh, description of uh, how uh, communication networks developed. So in the past, there was uh, many different networks for many different purposes. Nowadays, change, we use one network, which is also called a uh, converged network for all services, uh, which uh, basically uses uh, everybody. So there are no separate networks like computer networks, PST and KTV. So now we use only one network, which is called converged network. Uh, what is the problem in today networks? So when the link or some router fail occurs in the network, the problem is that uh, customer sees outage. Uh, usually, this outage of provider's network can last from few milliseconds up to hundreds of uh, milliseconds or tens of seconds. Uh, it has a negative impact on performance on the network and also uh, the reliability of network rapidly changes. Uh, in this uh, presentation, on this slide, we see the steps, how protocol reacts during the convergence, convergence process. So the first is outage detection. The second is uh, the response of the local router to the line ferrous. During this phase, uh, there is LSA updates and other updates from other protocols sent through the network. Uh, the first step is distribution of the information to the other routers, recalculation of the routing tables, usually this uh, made by Dijkstra, and uh, the last step is uh, installation new routing tables in hardware. So what is the solution? 
solution to these problems, the one of the solution is the, the technique fast the route, which we uh, described in our paper. So what is uh, fast the route and how does it work? So the key principle of this technology is that router calculates alternative backup path in advance. So what does it mean? Uh, we have this kind of uh, topology. Primary route is from clients, from S router to D router and server. Uh, let's pretend that uh, you, between S and D will occur some network, maybe congestion, or it doesn't matter. So there is a failure. And uh, now, how does it work? So, fast real. First step is fast failure detection. So between S and between D, there is a BFD protocol, which uh, usually detects uh, outage in uh, 30 milliseconds. And the key, uh, like I uh, mentioned, uh, is that router S has a calculated alternative backup path in advance. So uh, when the error detection occurs in 30 or 50 milliseconds, the data are rerouted very fast uh, through alternative route. Um, it can be uh, by uh, router N1 or uh, router N2. So in our paper, we described three latest solution uh, for this optimistic fast routing. Uh, second is post-processing fast route, and third is local fast route with load congestion and random access. So optimistic fast route. Uh, from this free uh, mechanism, uh, my personal opinion, I really liked this kind of mechanism, which is called optimistic. Uh, this uh, solution provides uh, two, two ways, how to, uh, or two modes, how to calculate alternative path. So first is for, uh, optimistic mode, and the second is fallback mode. Uh, the first optimistic mode uh, is, uh, th that means that the alternative path is the best possible path uh, in topology. Uh, they declare in their manuscript that uh, it is the shortest route with the lowest cost and also with the low, lowest DA. Uh, there are some conditions in our paper which must uh, the topology or the alternative path meet to be chosen as an optimistic. And if uh, this optimistic uh, mode fails, it means that uh, conditions are not fulfilled. Uh, this optimistic phase routing we will switch to the second mode, which is called fallback. Fallback mode you, uh, calculates uh, any potential alternative backup route, and it is it is why it's called fallback. On the picture, uh, the red arrow is the primary path, uh, the green is optimistic path, and the blue is uh, fallback mode. So there is a very good example if we consider a link matrix equal in all topology, that uh, optimistic path is shortest and uh, the fallback is uh, longer path with a higher cost. The second algorithm which we described in our manuscript is post-processing fast route. Uh, how does it work? So basically it uh, calculates uh, trees, uh, especially disjoint arc trees, uh, as we see two graphs. So on the first, uh, on the first or on the left uh, image, we see uh, calculated uh, the first digital act tree and uh, on the second, there is uh, uh, the red tree and the blue tree. Uh, how does it work? Well, uh, router, with enabled post-processing fast route changes these uh, forwarding trees uh, according the fare. So it means if, for example, fail uh, road from X 
to be if you use the red tree and if we uh, if happen another error it will use the blue tree the problem with this uh, algorithm is that uh, it is very complex because you must calculate uh, trees for uh, or a lot of errors and it is not easy to change the trees basically according to our age. The last solution we described was a local fast reout. Uh, this local fast reout uh, uh, is uh, completed from three randomized fast forwarding algorithms. Uh, authors of the paper papers uh, declares that uh, these solutions are all free solutions are all free and also uh, does not occur packet reordering so which is a very good feature because of some algorithms uh, doesn't take this fact to account during the design of fast route solution uh, in the yeah, the paper, we some complex overview of um, most use fast route solution and also we put uh, the three new analyze solution uh, to the bottom of our comparison. Um, uh, if we look uh, at the very big companies like Cisco or uh, or other, companies which made hardware for routers uh, usually they use very simple solutions like uh, uh, and also ECMP why is that so the problem with modern solutions like open fast real and post processing fast real is that they are very complex they are not easy to implement but uh, the advantage of these solutions are that they have very high repair coverage. So what repair coverage means? Repair coverage is a number from zero to hundred percent, which represent uh, uh, in percentage how many uh, outage in the network can this solution repair or find alternative path. So as I told, as I told, as I mentioned in my presentation, all three alternates, ECMP and uh, sometimes remote alpha, they are very uh, easy to implement, but they have um, small repair coverage percentage. So uh, companies usually pick solutions that are easy to implement and they don't bother with uh, best ratio of repair. So that's end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, attention topic from the wider audience. If there are any questions, please feel free to message on the chat or uh, you can also uh, discuss directly with us so i have seen so you are uh, reporting sometimes uh, required for uh, traveling of datagram between two points routers uh, there was something about yeah, in your presentation about 10 milliseconds from 10 milliseconds up to 100 milliseconds what do you think about this uh, this timing uh, of uh, the data transmission because there are for example highly demand uh, uh, computer games real time online computer games and uh, such uh, delay in this uh, timing uh, are creating significant issues if uh, you are playing well, okay uh first uh fast drive technology was invented maybe 15 years ago uh in that time or in maybe 20 years ago uh 50 millisecond of outage was not so problem because uh, people could wait 
okay, uh, I am from small village and I remember when internet falls off, mm -hmm. we had to wait maybe 12 hours uh, until admin will fix that. But now the situation has rapidly changed. Uh, there are uh, a lot of operations are real time. For example, uh, robots in hospital are driven by uh, internet mm -hmm. and uh, delay of 100 milliseconds is not acceptable for this, uh, for this uh, age. So uh, these protocols like OSPF or EIGRP, uh, they were designed uh, years ago. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, they are not recommend to change their default timers. So here comes uh, the purpose of uh, super technologies like Pazirial, which can uh, fix, temporarily fix uh, communication flow until the classic like OSPF protocol with your finish the uh, update of routing tables. Okay, thank you. And uh, a second question from me. Are there significant differences between the protocols that you analyze in your work? These protocols which we analyzed, uh, how can I say? Uh, I uh, spent years in uh, fast real technology. So mm -hmm. I also, my PhD thesis was uh, in uh, this uh, topic. I have to say that a lot of these solutions are very similar. They just uh, focus how to achieve a higher percentage of repair coverage, mm -hmm. but the cost is always, they are more complex. And like I said, I think that we will not, uh, push companies like Cisco to develop very complex solution to the real networks. They always pick some very easy to implement with some half amount of percentage of repair coverage, like scientific new solutions. Okay, so thank you very much again for presentations. Uh, I can see any question from the audience or so we can move to the last presentation. Uh, our last presentation has title uh, using lever crossing rate of selection combining receiver damage with Xi fading and Rissian Q channel interference with a purpose of machine learning to always level prediction. Uh, there is group of authors from Serbia and Saudi Arabia and the presenter is uh, Dragana Kritic from Serbia. So what is yours? You have 15 minutes for presentation and few minutes for discussion with audience. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to can present one of our papers of uh, my group. I'm Dragana Krstic, as you told, from Faculty of Electronic Engineering, University of Nish. This paper uh, is actually uh, analysis of level crossing rate of selection combining receiver uh, damaged by below XI fading and Reich and co-channel interference. And uh, additionally, this is used for machine learning quality of service level prediction. Uh, presentation uh, is organized as it is usual uh, beside the introduction, a few words about uh, our uh, model, uh, then uh, derivation of level crossing rate of signal to interference ba uh, is the ratio uh, at the output of our SC receiver. Um, the next uh, we um, we plotted some graphs and based on them, we analyzed parameter influence. And uh, next is determination of quality of service using classification in VECA and uh, at the end, some conclusion. Um, in our paper, uh, we analyzed widely system impacted by below XI fading, uh, which of the newest model for modeling fading influence and uh, co-channel interference, which is modeled by known Russian distribution. We use selection diversity combining technique to com 
but both these influences of padding and uh, quaternal interference and derived level crossing rate for such uh, receiver. Based on graphs, we um, told some words about the effects of uh, this influence of uh, level crossing rate. Additionally, we propose the classification based predictive model, which leverages the previously calculated uh, value of the level crossing rate as one of uh, inputs among other valuable uh, variables, uh, uh, such as number of users, base stations, day uh, in the weekend, uh, with this aim of quality of service level prediction. Since uh, for wireless communication systems, uh, it's very important to make a good model of uh, influences uh, which influence uh, transmitted signal. And this wireless uh, communication system is one of the fastest developing technology uh, in nowadays. Uh, many researchers try to investigate uh, new models and new, uh, new distributions of uh, fading. Uh, since radio frequency band is uh, used uh, for many users, um, it is necessary to develop new bands as millimeter wave, tetrahertz bands, femtocells, and also wireless powered communication systems. Uh, fifth generation cellular networks tend to millimeter wave frequency spectrum to tolerate higher data transmission rates with low delays, what is the goal um, in transmission. Uh, as I told, uh, it is necessary uh, correct uh, model uh, environment for transmitting signals. Uh, many measurements uh, are made in different wireless environments. Uh, many data are collected and researchers try based on them to model uh, as uh, suitable as possible small scale padding influence in wireless uh, channels. Uh, uh, so new distribution made by Bilo and Xi and named by, by their names is uh, very descriptive uh, model uh, introduced into in consideration. Um, this model is characteristic because um, it includes uh, both multiple line of sight components and also non-line of sight components of uh, signals. Uh, also, it is a general distribution and include uh, many other known distributions such as Nakagami M uh, and Raishan distribution. Uh, and um, also uh, it uh, uh, is used to model wireless channel uh, with non-central uh, sheet, generalized duration and KME distribution when we put uh, special values of uh, its parameters. Uh, uh, it will be seen on the uh, slide after a few slides. After that, we uh, present a performance con consideration of uh, this below C fading channel in the pre presence of uh, co-channel interference for multi-branch SC diversity technique, which is used as one of uh, not so expensive and um, good enough uh, diversity technique to improve system performance. Here we derived second order system performance namely uh, level crossing rate. Um, the, uh, this performance level crossing rate is actually average number of times per second. Uh, the, the envelope of radio signals drop below a given threshold, while the average fade duration as another uh, second, uh, second order performance is average time interval during which the signal remain below that threshold. Um, this uh, knowledge of uh, this uh, performance is help with error correction and calculating the average outage duration of wireless communication systems. After that, in the second part of the paper, we integrate the proposed system model within network modeling and simulation environment and leverage the calculated value or level crossing rate, relying on GPU for proposal quality of service prediction using machine learning. 
in that uh, context. We create the problem as classification and provide implementation using Becca framework in Java programming the language. We use the, as I told, the uh, selection combining receiver with the uh, L input and um, sign for input signals uh, with the uh, uh, below C fedding are X uh, one, two till uh, L. Uh, also, you can see here um, SSE signals, uh, which are signed by epsilon one, two till L. And uh, the ratio of these two is uh, signed by uh, ZI, uh, it is signal to interference ratio. Uh, algorithm of working of SC combiner is to choose maximal value of signal to interference ratio of all received signal to interference ratios ZI. And uh, here you can see uh, the PDF uh, of the uh, fading model by be, uh, below C distribution. Here you can see a few different parameters. Uh, lambda present non-centrality parameter, and it controls the location and high of this PDF. Omega is power and controls the spread. Lambda squared represent the power of the loss component. And finally, the ratio of uh, squared lambda and the omega is the ratio k factor, representing the ratio between the total average power of the loss component and total average power of scattered components. On the next slide, you can see uh, ratio distribution of our co-channel interference with the uh, uh, S i as power of uh, uh, co-channel interference and K i is Reichmann factor, which is equal um, to the ratio of direct and uh, scattered components. Uh, now, uh, PDF of uh, SIR, uh, actually signal to interference ratio is given by the formula below. Uh, now, uh, we presented here uh, uh, cumulative distribution function of signal to interference ratio, where uh, incomplete beta function is signed by B. Uh, now we derived the uh, level crossing rate of signal to interference ratio, and the final formula is given on this slide. Of course, uh, who is interested can see the full paper and the derivation process in the paper. A final formula for level crossing rate for uh, output signal to interference ratio Z in, is given by this formula. And based on this formula, we uh, plotted some graphs and analyzed the influence of um, uh, our uh, parameters I uh, mentioned earlier. Here on this uh, first figure, you can see the influence of uh, severity, fading severity parameter M and the ration factor K. And it's possible to see that the small for small signal values when Z is uh, less than zero, uh, uh, when uh, uh, M increases, LCR decreases, and this is uh, the sign that system has better uh, characteristic. And it is uh, according theory also. Uh, also, it's possible to see that for positive values of uh, signal to interference ratio, when the ration factor uh, is increasing, uh, the performance uh, are also better, actually, level crossing rate is uh, de decreasing. On the second figure uh, is presented the influence of the next parameter uh, lambda and the number of branches uh, signed by L. Uh, of course, uh, that uh, increasing of number of branches will improve system performance uh, according theory, but it is also visible that the biggest improvement is when L is uh, enlarged from two to three, and then uh, uh, it is lesser and less. Also, increasing of lambda improves system performances uh, when level crossing rate uh, decreases. 
Now some words about other parts. Uh, predictive models leveraging machine learning techniques are among the enables when it comes to innovative use cases and novel functionalities within sta state-of-the-art and mobile networks. Notable scenario include network uh, load prediction, anomaly detection, adaptive quality of service adjustment. This paper proposes an approach to determination of quality of service level based on supervised machine learning classification methods, taking into account the previously derived level crossing rate value as one of the inputs among the other factors factors between them are uh, number of service users within area of interest, identifier of base station responsible for providing service in that area, identifier of uh, area under consideration, although it is important which day of the week is. However, when it comes to output of the predictive model, it represents estimation of quality of service level, which is categorical and could have one of the following values. When uh, uh, it is zero, it means presence of anomalies, male function, law is um, uh, signed by one, acceptable level by two, and high with three. Uh, layout of underlying data set is shown in the table on this slide when all these uh, quantities can see in table. Regarding the implementation, we use free framework in Java programming language, Vicato environment for knowledge analysis, signed by Veka, application programming interface. Also, we earlier consider other performance uh, average with error probability instead the level crossing rate here and different type of fading and co-channel interface combination in our other papers. VECA API for Java includes a wide collection of machine learning algorithms which are free to use and released under a GNU public license. It provides functionality covering many aspects related to data access and management, analysis, and visualization. When it comes to classification method, VECA supports the ones which are commonly used, such as decision table, stamps, three known as J48, and KNN referred to as uh, IBK. Here you can see, um, one figure illustrates the complete workflow of our approach. Uh, first, uh, user creates a network model in our simulation and planning environment. Uh, when model is completed, uh, it is proceed for purpose of uh, level crossing rate cal calculation, <coughs> relying on GPGPU method, which provides significant speed up compared to traditional uh, CPU only based approach. Determination of uh, QoS uh, 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 is then uh, uh, made by training process uh, by a few steps. Uh, you can see here uh, three steps of uh, uh, training process. And uh, finally, after that, we can make use of model in order to perform prediction on previously unseen samples. Additionally, based on results of prediction, adaptation of base station and underlying ca uh, carrier infrastructure can be done with goal to keep the perceived usage quality at satisfactory level, such as turning off in case when there is a malfunction, then anomalies are on uh, what compensate quality of service drop. Here is a presented table with some results from this uh, consideration. And uh, as a conclusion, I can tell a few uh, repeat sentence that we analyze uh, uh, selection combining receiver in the presence of the biloxi padding and Ryshan co-channel interference uh, because this padding distribution is uh, uh, good uh, as a general distribution uh, to emphasize other known distributions and uh, describe um, transmitted signal with um, uh, line of sight and non line of sight signals. For uh, this scenario, we derived level crossing rate. Uh, 
analyze performances, uh, uh, parameters of adding in, uh, uh, interference, and uh, additionally propose the software environment for simulation of level crossing rate for observed system under influence of this. Uh, disturbances, calculated level crossing rate, and uh, it was uh, one of inputs for classification-based method aiming quality of service estimations. As uh, Chairman told, uh, this uh, paper was made uh, uh, by the group of authors uh, as one of uh, papers with uh, Indian colleagues. Um, uh, within project uh, between Republic of Serbia and India. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, I am here. Okay, thank you for presentation. Uh, if the audience has some question, please ask. Uh, we can wait. If not, uh, I have some questions regarding what I catch during your presentation. It was very interesting, very uh, uh, good presentation, which was uh, focused on, on so many things. Uh, so I have uh, some uh, note uh, for you. Uh, maybe I didn't catch this information, but uh, how many users did uh, you consider in uh, your uh, scenarios? If it uh, was simulated for uh, light of sight and non-line of sight uh, cases. How many users? Um... Uh, it is important to say that this, uh, if this is your question, uh, this uh, fading uh, include more than one direct line of sign. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, um, we use uh, many copies of transmitted signal okay. in uh, receiver. Uh, here it was L of them uh, uh, input in uh, receiver and then uh, output is maximal of uh, signal to interference ratio. We change the number of, uh, yeah, of and the minimal number, some range between minimal and maximal, but it's sufficient as a answer. No, of course, for minimal me. is uh, two, and maximal can be <laughs> what you want. Uh, okay. Of course, mathematical investigations yeah, 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 uh, yeah, will yeah. be uh, slower. Okay. And uh, if you consider uh, several types of uh, propagation models, uh, so which one was the worst if you have implemented in your simulation? Which more model of propagation? There was Riley, I think I catch the name of the model. Uh, we we can obtain Rayleigh model uh, when we put uh, for our parameter in base fading uh, as. Uh, I show on this slide, uh, here, here is mm -hmm. uh, a formula for, uh, for Bx fading. And uh, when we put uh, some special values for M and Lambda, we can obtain other fading distribution. And this was a manner we uh, check our previous results uh, when we analyze this uh, uh, earlier known uh, fading distributions uh, such as Nakagami, mm -hmm. also including it uh, Rayleigh and Raishan, uh, also Kami and so on. Uh, when we put uh, uh, parameter uh, K to be uh, K in K, K also in, in Kami distribution uh, and the special value for me tied to um, me, oh, I, I, Greek me in K me distribution, we can obtain K and me. Uh, uh, I, I, I think uh, in the paper uh, you can see special values uh, which is used to obtain uh, known uh, uh, distributions from earlier period. Hey, thank you very uh, but, much. For uh, uh, what is important is to, to consider new distributions because uh, they uh, show better, um, uh, better um, uh, with um, investigating and measured values. Uh, it is uh, connected with better model to include these measurements. Uh, if you can understand what yeah. I, I want to, to tell. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> to better model uh, mm -hmm. uh, environment. Yeah, I understand. 
So there are not questions from audience. So it was the, our last presentation for this session. So I would like to uh, thank to everyone which was uh, visiting us in the room, which was presenting. It was very nice to see very good presentations and uh, have some uh, ideas about it. Uh, therefore, I'm really thankful for all presenters and we can officially, I think, close uh, this session. So thank you Metro, very much again and I officially close this session. So one is success in your uh, researches and your works. For, for me, it's now, I think, everything. Thank, thank you. you, Roman. Thank you You're to everyone thank you. for, for giving presentations.